this point in time welcome our eighth graders and all of our family, community, and even uh, retired and active military members to our Veterans Day ceremony. So thank you for joining us today. We are very pleased that we get to make this an annual opportunity to remember and salute those that have defended our country and or lost their life in doing so. As we go through several things today, we'll be sharing um, many readings, music, and uh, having some speakers come up. I would ask for any adult out there, if you don't mind, would you check your cell phones, please, just to make sure they're on silence? Um, just in respect, especially for the folks that are gonna take the opportunity to come up and speak, if we can give them that courtesy, I would appreciate it. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to rise. Our eighth grade student, Dominic McCurley, will be presenting the United States flag. <laughs> Please remain standing. Ms. Reagan Dunamill will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated.
Spanish celebration today. I would now like to invite to the podium our SGA president, Amara Crow, who will be reading a presidential proclamation. World Freedom Day 2016 by the President of the United States of America. A proclamation. The Berlin Wall stood in the city it divided for nearly 30 years, separating families and loved ones and embodying the authoritarianism that reigned in communist states throughout the Cold War. On November 9th, 1989, with the courage of their convictions and a longing to forge their own destinies, Germans from both east and west sides of the wall celebrated history as a defining symbol of the Iron Curtain collapse. 27 years later, we pay tribute to the unyielding determination of those who chose unity over division and we rededicate ourselves to carrying the spirit forward whenever core tenets of democracy and liberty are at stake. When President John F. Kennedy declared in West Berlin that when one man is enslaved, all are not free, we captured the irrevocable truth of the work that we <coughs> this day. Our world is more prosperous and free than any other time in our history, with more people than ever before choosing their leaders for free elections and living in democracies greater respect for human rights. But such liberty will not emerge across the globe in a single wave. Building strong democratic institutions and, in main and maintaining robust civil societies is the work of generations. And it is up to each of us to put our shoulders to the wheel of progress and to fight for the future we seek. Whether in quiet struggle or the bosterous protest, the Berliners who endured the division the Berlin Wall created and stood for, remind us of the necessity to never abandon the values that have brought us as far as we today. For centuries, people of every nation have borne witness to great strife and tension in our ever-changing world. But we have proven we can always choose a better course through our relentless pursuit of freedom. Across oceans and continents, in recognition of World Freedom Day, let us reaffirm our commitment to carrying forward the enduring celebration of liberty that define the fall of the Berlin Wall. Now, therefore, I, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim November 9, 2016, as World Freedom Day. I call upon the people of the United States to observe this day with appropriate ceremonies and activities, reaffirming our dedication to freedom and democracy. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand this eighth day of November and the year of our Lord, 2016, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 241st. Barack Obama.
Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row and row. The marker plays in the heavy sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if you break faith with us we die. We shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders Fields. One of the more exciting opportunities that we have every year, uh, eighth graders, and you don't, you don't realize this because you only get to go through it once, but it's an exciting opportunity we get each year to hear from a veteran, to get to share uh, some insights and some stories and some background, um, to let us know exactly what the value of us taking time out like this uh, does and, and, and what it was for. So it gives me great pleasure today to introduce our guest speaker, Sergeant First Class from the U.S. Army, retired, Mr. Michael Derrickson. Hello, Stevensville Middle School. My name is uh, retired Sergeant First Class Mike Derrickson. I served in the Army for three years as a uh, Voice intercept operator in mil military intelligence. I was taught uh, German, and after my service, uh, was sent to the Army National Guard, where I spent another 14 years there. And in that capacity, our unit was a tank unit, so we got to ride around in tanks and personnel carriers. Didn't have to walk. What is Veterans Day? Veterans Day goes back to the end of World War I. We celebrate Veterans Day on this day, November the 11th, because the armistice was signed at the 11th hour, the 11th day, and the 11th month, marking the end of World War I. By act of Congress, it was later designated as Veterans Day to celebrate the service of all veterans from all branches of the service, whether they be Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Army National Guard, or the Air National Guard. Now, when you look at TV, you see news of the battlefront in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria. And you see a lot of shooting going on. And I am very proud of those people that serve in the combat zone. Although I probably would not like to be there. They suffer a lot of hardship being out in the desert for weeks without having showers, no air conditioning, lousy food, and little rest. And for that, I'm proud. Now, 
There are also many other people that serve in the armed forces. There are policemen, there are lawyers, there are ground surveillance operators, there are air traffic controllers, there are doctors, nurses, pilots, medics, intelligence people, uh, communications people, financial people, they serve you and the military. And just about any career path that you have in civilian life is included in the military. Today, we celebrate all those veterans that are currently serving or have served that are still alive. But let's not forget, there are veterans out there that come back as broken people from military service. Our VA hospitals are full of them. You'll see people that only have one leg or no legs, arms missing, head trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, and we have to consider those also. We also include all those servicemen and women that are currently missing in action or are POWs. So today, when you leave this assembly, if you see someone wearing a military shirt, a military hat, or being in uniform, you walk up to that man or woman and you take and thank them for their service. They will reply, I was proud to serve you. It'll make you feel good and it'll make that veteran feel good. Thank you for your time. At this time, the Stevensville Middle School Band will be playing two selections for us. I will ask for the first that everyone please rise once again for the Star Spangled Banner.
opportunities that I get to do each year is I get to do the closing remarks for this event. And I direct my remarks truly to our eighth graders because, and I, I so appreciate um, Sergeant Derrickson's comments because they are very much in line with a lot of the things that I like to share with our eighth graders, is at, at your age, 13, 14, you know, 15, in that age range there, you don't have a perspective of the decades and decades and decades of sacrifice that went into you being able to do some of the things that you're allowed to do today. You wake up every morning, you get the opportunity to get up and go to school without any problems. So it's, it's, it's a free choice, you get to go to school, you get social media, you get television, you get opportunities to play sports, you get opportunities to be parts of organizations. And whether you know it or not, it's because of the sacrifices of others throughout the years that have not only established those freedoms for you, but they've maintained them for you so that you have the right to do these things and the freedom to do these things. It's funny, when we, when we deal with school, and I was, I was explaining this to the retired sergeant here a little while ago, we were talking about um, memory. And I said, you know, we work with middle schoolers, we understand the idea of short memory. <laughs> we say, don't do that. You leave the room, and sometimes you do it again. And there are a lot of things that are done in this country that when we look at it, we're like, I can't believe people do those things. But it's because people have served and are currently serving that you have the freedom to do that. You have the freedom to make mistakes. You have the freedom to give your opinion. You have the freedom to say what you want to say. You get the freedom to act how you want to act. And I think at your age, what a wonderful opportunity it is to hear from folks that have done this, to meet people that are currently serving, and really understand at your core that this is not just a, hey, why didn't we get school off this day? It's Veterans Day, everything else is closed. But it's a real purpose as to why we have Veterans Day. And understanding that although you may not have any family members or anybody that you know that was in the military, someone out there who you don't even know is out there on watch right now making sure that you're safe here. And that's, that's a real daunting thought when you think about it. I want to second the suggestion of if you see anyone in service in uniform, wearing anything that is military, thanking them is a wonderful opportunity for you. I believe most of you know, but even in our own school we have someone who serves. Mr. Barnum is currently in the Air Force. He still runs missions, does flights. Sometimes you'll see that he misses a day because he's doing things for the military. But he is still part of that group of individuals who are protecting and making sure that we can do what we want to do. So even if you're not sure when you go out and you see someone, you have someone in, the, in this building that many of you may have had as a teacher that you could thank. A lot of you are involved in sports. A lot of you have been to professional sports games or to another activity. You will notice people at those all the time that are helping to just secure areas to make sure that it's safe. Because unfortunately, when we think military, we think foreign wars, but there are things here that we're being protected against every day. So while it may seem a little bit out of your comfort zone, think of the comfort zone that folks are out of, as you just heard, where they're gone for weeks out in the desert without showering with poor food and conditions to protect you. I think getting out of your comfort zone for five seconds to walk up to someone and shake their hand and say thank you for your service is the very least that we can do for these folks. I want to thank all of our guests who have joined us today. This is a unique opportunity that Stevensville Middle School has to do this for our community. and We do take it very seriously and we're very appreciative of that. I want to thank our choir and our band for doing excellent jobs in helping us to celebrate this day and remember those folks that are serving for us. I especially would like to thank our guest speaker for joining us today. It is a pleasure and an honor to always have someone who has served or is currently serving to come and speak on this event. 
guests, as you go out of here today, out in the lobby, we have some few refreshments that you are more than welcome to, to have some of. I also will tell you that if you go out this door, the main hallway down here, the second room on the left, no, I'm sorry, the first room on the left, as you're going down there, is open and it is a small museum of memorabilia, pictures, and things that we have from family members of students, of staff, people that we know, that is kind of a, just our own little thank you that we set up each year for those individuals. And we invite you um, to go down and, and view that and join us in that. So once again, let's give a round of applause to all of our guests. And before we let our eighth graders go, I would invite all of the adult guests that we have on. We'll give you first shot before we send 150 some students down if you would like to go out and have some refreshments and see the museum. And then students will let our guests leave and then we will come down by class. You're gonna stay right there. Can take with them that our eighth graders wrote. Oh, that's good. So, we have a bunch of letters here that our eighth graders wrote if you'd like to take oh, them. Oh, we're good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. I didn't see. Oh, I was looking for the military oh, stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't have anything. Please take a take a letter with you. Our eighth graders wrote them for our veterans. Two eighth graders. And I don't know whether every eighth grade class did this. Great. Yeah, he's probably collected a lot of this stuff over the years, too. from Mr. Apple. Oh, this so many Apple. of these things um, were he either had or were given to him by former students. Oh, okay. Um, some of them, like the stuff that's on the blue table, I brought in. Um, some of it was from my dad. Some of it was from my uncle. And some is from a friend that I have that served in Vietnam. I don't know who the jackets came from. And some of the stuff was brought in by students from their parents.